Good day, students. This is Mrs. Chaka, your English lecturer. I'm still on level three, module five. I'm covering the last lesson, which is now minutes of the meeting. I'm also going to combine it with the core notes. I'm going to explain all those items to you just in a second. All right, like I said, we are doing the last version or the last lesson of this module, meeting documentations in the workplace. All right, I'm gonna cover minutes of the meeting and the corners as I have already mentioned. Okay, what is minutes uh, of the meeting? Minutes are an accurate and unbiased record of the proceedings, discussions, decisions, taken at the meeting. How do we write minutes of a meeting? First of all, you, also, you need to understand the style and the tone of how we write minutes of the meeting. Minutes must be clear, logical, complete, objective. You must give facts, not opinions or feelings. Your, your minutes must be objective and correct. Write minutes in the third person, in the past tense and in direct speech, using short, clear sentences, such as an example that I have given you here, which talks about Mr. Jones said that he would organize the seminar. Already as it is, you can see that this is written in the past tense and in direct speech, okay? The format of the meetings, oh sorry, the format of the minutes of the meeting goes like this. Always give minutes a heading. It's important to give your minutes a heading. In our case, it's going to be Mzansi Foods, our heading. In the opening sentence, name which type of meeting it is, okay? If it is a monthly meeting, you need to state it's a monthly meeting. If it is a, a special meeting, you need to state it's a special meeting, as well as the venue, the day, the date, and the time, just as we have written in, in our notice, okay? Follow the same order with the same heading as the agenda, and then make space right at the bottom of the minutes for the following approved at all the minutes must be approved and signed by the chairperson and the secretary and also the date must be included in the minutes. Okay, here's our minutes. Our minutes here are written uh, this way. Okay, so I'm gonna explain part one and part two because they're a bit uh, longer so they could not fit in one page. So I tried to separate the pages so that we can thoroughly uh, examine this uh, minutes of the meeting. Okay, I did mention that you need to have the heading on top, which is our heading, this is it, Mzansi Foods. In our case, this is the organization's name. And then you need to also reflect the information on the notice, like the notice that we've covered. All the notices that we've covered, they have indicated where the meeting is going to be, and the dates and also the time. So with the minutes as well, you have to mention where was this meeting held. Remember, you are going to write it in the third person. You are writing it in the third person in the past tense using an indirect speech. So you can see minutes of the preview, sorry, minutes of the management meeting of Mzansi Food held in the boardroom on Friday the 23rd, 2020. Usually minutes are, 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 are written after the meeting has taken place, okay? The minutes are written after the meeting has taken place. Hence, you have to write it in the third, in the third person and also in the past tense. The attendance register, remember the three items that I said are forever in the agenda and also they will forever be in the minutes, in the minutes of uh, the meeting, okay? Attendance register. What is this attendance register? It's the number of people or a list of names of people who are attending the meeting, okay? So the attendance 
register was circulated and signed by everyone. I'm going to explain this when I explain to you about the colos. This is where you have to state that the attendance register was circulated and signed by everyone present. Okay, point number two. This is where now you have to name names of you have your names of your absentees people who could not make it to this meeting this is where all the uh, people that could not make it to the meeting is going to be placed okay that are your apologies that's your apologies okay and then we will have your opening and welcoming usually the opening and welcoming is done by the chairperson okay it is done by the chairperson. So you will say the chairperson, Mr. H.D. Mudaung, opened the meeting and welcomed everyone present. Okay? I think you can see that I'm using the numbering system that I used in the agenda. So whatever that is in the agenda is exactly what I'm going to talk about here in the minutes. Okay, number four, minutes of the previous meeting. I explained what are minutes of the previous meeting to you, but I'm going to explain it again. You must, uh, minutes of the previous meeting, are uh, all the items that have been discussed in the previous meeting and they must be approved. They must be approved. Hence why we have the proposal here and also we have the seconder. All the minutes of the previous meeting were read, approved, and signed by this uh, 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 signed by the chairperson or the secretary. Okay, in this case, you must correct the errors if there were errors here. That's where you correct the errors in the uh, minutes of the management meeting. You correct the errors, and the sentence must be there. In this, the sentence, in the sentence, you must include the proposal and the seconder to show that it has been approved, okay? Whatever that you have discussed in the previous meeting, everything is corrected, then it must be approved. And at a later on, must also be signed, okay? Matters arising. I did explain to you what matters arising is. If the chairperson is tasked with a, a certain task and he must come and report back, this is where the information is going to be. In our case here, the heaters for the staff room. According to Mr. Mudaw, two new... Okay. According to Mr. Mudaw, two new panel heaters uh, from the staff room had been installed. They work well and uh, two more would be installed in the recent in the reception so this is a short report that tells us uh, what the manager has done uh, that needed to be addressed in the matters arising okay and let's go to point number six which is our part two of the the minutes okay number six will be your new business new business remember i said it is items of this meeting items of the current meeting so every information that you are going to discuss which is current in this meeting is going to be under new business uh, staff evaluation Tepo Mujake, the hr manager reminded the meeting about the annual staff evaluation which would take place during the first week of august you would hand out the forms that all staff members had to fill in. You must remember all this information that you are writing when you are writing minutes of the previous meeting, uh, sort of minutes of the, of the meeting, you must write in the past tense. General information, if nothing else was discussed, that's how you're going to note it down, and the date of the next meeting will be indicated here and closure and now this is where the signatures are going to take place the next the chairperson is going to sign off the minutes if everything is corrected everything is fine it must be signed 
These kinds of documents can also be utilized in the court of law. So it is important to have a signature, you know, to show that the meeting set and you agreed on points. So the secretary also signs and the date is stated. Which date is this one? The date which uh, the minutes have been written and corrected. Now, let us talk about the core notes. What are the core notes? Other people call core notes shorthand. Remember, every meeting, somebody has to write the minutes. And it is quite impossible for you to write every word that the person is saying in a minute, in a, in a meeting. So how do you write, how do you then write the minutes or how do you write the notes? You have to shorten the notes, hence shorthand, core notes, okay? You have to shorten the notes and expand them into now the minutes uh, of the meeting, which we have covered. All right, so usually before you can even write the minutes, we start with the core notes, with the core notes, okay? Remember we take core notes uh, of the facts. We don't take core notes of opinions or core notes of feelings. We take core notes of facts. We ignore emotional or, or, or opinions. Listen carefully and don't write full sentences. Note down verbs and nouns as they convey meaning. Leave out pronouns, prepositions, the, a, n, and end. Here's a beautiful example of the core notes. I said to you, it is impossible for a person to write each word in a meeting or else you are going to be left behind. So, it's important for you to write core notes and then expand them at a later stage, okay? Here's a, a wonderful example of core notes. Miss Bordoza, very upset, ordered tiles two months ago. Paid, dep, tired waiting, wants to cancel order. Please, P-H, hair, A-S, AP and phone numbers. I know this does not make any sense right now, but let us look at the exact description of what was said in that meeting. It was gonna go like this. Mrs. Bordoza is very upset. She ordered tiles two months ago and paid the deposit. She's tired of waiting and wants to cancel her order. Please phone her as soon as possible on 08078246120. So do you understand the core notes now? This information is a whole lot. It's a lot for you to write in full at a go. So in order for you to have important notes that you're going to expand on a later stage, you need to practice how to write core notes. Please do this with, with your, your sister or your brother at home or even your parents, you know. Learn to listen to what they say and try to take notes. The more you practice, the better you're going to be when it's coming to core notes. Core notes are assisting a whole lot of people who have to expand the notes into a fully fleshed minutes of the meeting. So please, it's very important for you to understand how to utilize the core notes. So let's look at an example, this example again. And you should look at the differences here, okay? This is the description of information that is said. So Mrs. Bordosa is very upset. She ordered tiles two months ago and paid the deposit. But look at it here. Mrs. Bordosa, very upset. Ordered tiles two months ago. So we need to know very upset why she ordered tiles two months ago and paid deposit. She paid deposit, okay? She's tired of waiting. And in the corner, you just write tired waiting, okay? And wants to cancel her order, wants to cancel order. Please phone her as soon as possible. 
please with a PLS. This is how you write, you usually write your, your, you know, uh, your WhatsApp when you talk to your friends, you shorten things. So conos are more or less the same as shortening uh, uh, things or using abbreviations, okay? Yeah, especially if you are typing in a hurry, you know, you'd always want to shorten or use abbreviations so that you can get to the point as soon as possible. So conos are exactly like that, my students. But you remember that we only take facts. We don't take emotional, emotional opinions or somebody else's feelings. It must be all about facts. So practice, practice, practice. All right. Um, how do we expand? Uh, um, how do we expand? Just before I explain uh, uh, the issue of expansion, you need to understand the vocab, what expand actually means. Expand means to write out in full, to give a more detailed description or an account, okay? How do you expand? I'm gonna go back here again. This is expanded. It's a full detailed, it's a more, fully fleshed detail than here, okay? That's how you expand the corners. Guidelines for expanding the corners, write out in full any words that have been abbreviated. For example, you remember that site? Uh, months is written M-T-H-S. It stands for months. So instead of you writing M-T-H-S again in the exam, when they say you must expand the corners because you are going to be given corners and then they will say to you expand them we are expecting you to write in full you utilize every item that is given to you and you become creative and write a full sentence using that information write out in full any phrases that have been abbreviated for example asap is as soon as possible that's full phrase okay add in verbs especially the verbs to be and to have, for example, Mrs. Bordoza, very upset. This is your connotes. If I have to expand the connotes, I'll say Mrs. Bordoza is very upset if I'm using uh, your to be or to have uh, verbs. Add in pronouns and make sure they are the same gender as the person, he or she, and are correct for the subject or object of the sentence. For example, Mrs. Bordoza is very upset. Since Mrs. Bordoza is a woman, she ordered the tiles. So pronouns are also very much important. They help you to expand the core notes. Add in prepositions, which is a, a, an example, tired waiting. These are our core notes, but if I have to expand this, I will say tired of waiting. Add in end or other joining words needed. For example, ordered tiles two months ago, paid deposit. But look at my paid deposit, it's PD deposit. These are core notes, but if I have to expand them, I'll say ordered tiles two months ago and, this is my joining word now, and paid the deposit. So this is full sentences, my students. If you don't write the expansion this way, you're going to lose marks. And again, I'm going to say to you, these are free marks because you are given the corners. All that you have to do is to be creative and expand them. That's all. So practice, practice, practice. Add in the uh, N before nouns where needed. For example, so these are the articles, uh, what I'm talking about, okay? Example, PD deposit. This is, this is our core notes. How do I expand them? Paid the deposit. See where my, my article is? Paid the deposit. Add in the correct punctuation and capital letters. 
very important, very important. At the end of the sentence, you put your punctuation, which is a full stop. The beginning of the sentence, you start your sentence with a capital letter. I hope you understood everything that I have covered in this lesson because I did teach you how to write the minutes. I did teach you how to write the core notes. I explained to you for exam, core notes will be given to you and you will be expected to expand the core notes. Practice as much as you can because expansion of the core notes requires you to be as creative as possible. And I've given you notes and I hope you look at them you know, refer uh, to them if you have forgotten how I have taught you about this whole thing that has to do with minutes and core notes. Okay, thank you so much for staying tuned. Please play, please, please, please stay safe. Focus on your studies. All will be well soon. <laughs>